Hi everyone, so this is um, Toph against PKC for Smog on Tour round 4 on the 2nd of April. This is the third week, and I'm going to see Elite Nido Queen pulled back into a sweet cone for BKC, while Elite Rose Raid sleeps the sweet cone of BKC. So it looks like he's I'm just finding the right Pokemon to sleep fodder, and he's getting out to his means of dealing with it in Clefable, while um, Toph sets up a toxic spike taking advantage of the free turn he got from sleep in sweet cone. Now, um, BKC is going to. Um, Hit Stealth Rock as Top retreats into Swamp, but likely to set up his own rocks as he does that exactly. So then we've got um, Has Left on both sides with Top having a tight spike advantage and knocking off the leftovers, and then Seismic tossing the Swamp as the Needle King Queen is, is roared out for BKC. The Toxic Spike is going to be removed, and it's going to be um, a full health Needle Queen out there using Protect into the Roar of Swampert. So now we're going to see Toxic Spikes from BKC, and Earthquake is just going to do a bit under, a bit over half, but after Leftovers, it's not going to be too clear, especially after Protect. Then it's going to be a roll. It did 53. It was at 54. Now it's at 60 after Leftovers in Protect. Now we're going to see a Skarmory for BKC, so it looks like we're going to see a bulkier team from BKC. We might see a more offensive team from Top, given a lead Rose Raid and Swampert. But that um, Tsukami is going to be roared out for a Tyranitar, even that five Pokemon on BKC's team are no revealed. And then the Tsukami is going to come back in, roar it out into the Sleeping Suicune. In all likelihood, I think it's a bulkier Suicune, given the nature of this team. But maybe we'll find out this turn, maybe not. Um, It looks like it's going to Sleep Talk, so yeah, it's probably Crow Code. It's going to Sleep Talk a rest, and Rosary is going to come back in. So it's going to threaten it out. I, might, I, I think BKC will go back into Skarmory or into Clefable in all likelihood, while um, I think Toph will either take his, his opportunity to talk Spike again or to just um, fire off a Leaf Storm or maybe even him by fire if wants to predict the Skarmory. But um, it looks like Toxic Spike is to play um, and Clefable is to play. So we've got a full Clefable versus 75%, 76% Rose Raid, and we've got Layer of Toxic Spike back up. So now we're going to see the back in the Swampert. Um, I think we're going to see Seismic Toss to damage it. And yep, Seismic Toss is going to hit it in the Swampert. It's already knocked off leftover, so it's at 43%, and it's going to take 25%, and there's going to be a roar. So now we've got 18% Swampert with Stealth Rock up. It's almost dead. It's probably in range for Needle Queen's Earthquake to kill it. I think Needle Queen will probably, Needle Queen will probably um, protect and then Earthquake to kill it. I don't know if Top will save this or not. Maybe PDC, BKC will predict that he's not going to save it and just Earthquake here. But no, he predicts to stay in and Earthquake. And BKC just gets the leftovers from the Protect. Now he's probably just going to Earthquake kill it. Yup. Needle Clean back up 72, and there's a 6 5 lead for BKC. But Information War is favoring top because he's only revealed three Pokemon as the, need, as the Heat Train comes out, while BKC's revealed five. So we've got an interesting um, Needle Clean follow up here in Heat Train. Um, not usually what you see to counter it. But I think that it could work if it's got a strong enough special attack like Life Orb, Earth Power. But um, it's not. It's going to um, only do 52%, but it's Shaka Berry. So that's going to be able to save the Toph Heatran from dying. So it's going to take 60% in return. It did 53%. Well, it first, so really, return was Earthquake. But nevertheless, Needle Queen is going to protect. So we're going to see a 32% Needle Queen here. We're going to see a 30% Heatran here. And it's revealed that it is indeed a Shaka Berry offensive Heatran. And, um,. No big play from Toph. He's not going to um, predict anything. He's just going to Earth Power in their last for BKC is revealed to be a Gliscor. And this is probably a Sword Dance variant. Could be a Taunt Stallbreaker variant, alternatively, but it's just going to Earthquake and not going to reveal that. It's going to be quicker than the Tran, which is all we're going to know. It's going to put BKC in a commanding 6 4 lead. So that's um, interesting. Um, Zapdos is the play here from Toph. Um, I don't think he has much of a means of breaking the BKC team. Especially given that Clefable is probably Yellow Waldus. Um, it is a sub, maybe sub Roost variant, which makes sense with Toxic Spikes, but given the presence of Needle Queen on BKC's team, he's got the poison absorbing. Um, luckily for BKC, Seismic Toss can be able to break the sub of Zapdos, because Zapdos doesn't have 100 base HP. Um, we're going to see sub Seismic Toss shenanigans. Eventually, one of them, probably BKC, is going to find his way out of this. Um, Maybe, oh, uh, we're going to see Hidden Power Ice there, which is interesting. Seismic Toss doing 31. Um, I think that BKC is going to want to knock off the leftovers when he gets the chance to. The question is, if Top will sub here a Roost, and um, BKC is going to predict the sub and Seismic Toss, but Top is going to go for the Roost, so he's going to get another chance to sub and stall some PP, you know. Um, Seismic Toss PP is whittling down quite quickly. Um, does this pressure apply? Yeah, it shows 19 PP left. It was pressure being applied on the PP counter on PS. So now we're going to see sub again, and... Seismic Toss. Okay, so now BKC gets a free knockoff or switch out, depending on whichever means of taking advantage of this Roost that he wants to do. So he's going to get the knockoff, and now we're going to have a leftoverless Zapdos that takes sand damage every turn. It's like holding Black Slug, basically. <laughs> um, anyway, so we're going to see the Clefable continue to Seismic Toss this. We're going to see Thunderbolt here from Zapdos doing 34%. I don't know why I went for Stealth Rock there. 
Um, I guess it doesn't really matter. He's just stalling out turns and PP and stuff. Um, but the Clefable is back at 90% after roosting off the second T-Bolt and leftovers being in the play. And BKC is just sitting there at um, 100% now. BKC is now 100% now after softballing against. It's after sitting powered. It's getting whittled down slowly, but um, he was at 46%. And he's going to roost as Tyrannic like comes in for BKC. So a bit of aggressive approach now from BKC. I like that. I'm um, trying to make some progress in this game. And um, let's see here. We're going to see Crunch doing 47. T-Bolt. Um, I, I would have roosted there if I was tough. And I was willing to commit myself staying in knowing he wouldn't stone edge for some reason. Although his rock resist is dead. But he's got another rock resist in Jirachi. Now he's going to come in on the Crunch. 35%. Leftovers. I guess that's on a Subarachi. Probably CM, GK... Psychic and Tin Power Fire, but we're gonna see Flash Cannon instead, and that's gonna be bad because that's not gonna be able to take out the um Tar and Crunch is a roll, and Crunch is gonna be able to kill the Rashi. So really big hole. Um, P BKC is up six three. Last month is Rotom. Um, I guess that's just Scarfer, but really I don't see any way for them to break this team of BKC. Though it looks like BKC could potentially win this five zero or six zero. Really, um, Clefable and I mean I guess the Tar being gone sort of makes Zapdos have a bit of a chance. But, but actually, now that I think of it, hmm. Okay, so you're gonna have to PP stall with the Fable, and you're gonna have to hidden power ice to Glisco, which kills it. Hidden power ice to Nidoqueen, which kills it from there. T bolt to Skarmory, which kills it. I mean, you get two kill with T bolt on the Suicune. Um, I think the BKC might be struggling with the Zapdos given that turn to dies to Stealth Rock. Anyway, um, the Shadow Ball into Clefable, the 5% turn to saved, I guess it's Death Fodder, then Seismic Toss into the um, Rosary, which switched out of the Rotom, and then um, that Leaf Storm as Skarmory came in for BKC. So we can see a 50% Skarmory from BKC, um, taking another Leaf Storm, now it's at 38, but it's going to roost up to 86, -ish, it's 92-ish, whatever. Um, Sand is eventually going to kill this. Oh, it's a critical at Leaf Storm at the last second. And a brave bird, so that's gonna um, really put a dent into the BKC Skarmory, leaving it 43% after this turn. So 42 turns in, and now the Zapdos comes in. And Zapdos is really gonna be stored here because if it could pull it back with its pressure, toxic sub, Bruce stalling, then it might have a chance to win, and otherwise, it looks like it's a good game. Now, BKC is just gonna um, whirlwind into the roost there. And that's really all Skarmory is useful given that the last two are electrics. We're gonna see an overheat here from the top Rotom Heat. So now it's a 5 2 game with Skarmory. Tyranitar being essentially dead for BKC, so really 4-2, but it hasn't switched in quite yet. And now we're going to see a Suicune come in and try to take advantage of the fact that he locked in the overheat because he didn't want to T-Bolt into Nido Queen or Gliscor. And um, Sleep Talk Roll is big here. Surf, and it's going to kill the Zapdos, and that's going to be the end of the road for top, it looks like. So yeah, had he not rolled Surf, in theory, there would have been maybe a chance to outstall, but I don't think the Zapdos would have lasted long enough. And yeah, they both dropped good games. I don't think there was any complaints about that. And even then, he risked that. And if that BKC got a combine or a surf on there, if he got combine, then he probably would have been able to tank enough from T Bolt to then combine again and then roost after that. I mean, rest talk after that, and then maybe potentially PP stall the Zapdos out of Thunderbolts, assuming he doesn't get crit. But that would be risking crit. So really, um, it looks like the game was well deserved. And that is all.